This week we are gonna go through uh, atmospheric water uh, part two, which is uh, we are gonna consider the precipitation, rainfall, evaporation, and transpiration. Uh, evapotranspiration as well. Uh, we are gonna go through and then talk about it in this week, and then we are gonna complete atmospheric water chapter in this week. First part is precipitation. Uh, precipitation includes rainfall, snowfall, and other processes by which water falls to the land surface, such as hail and sleet. The formation of precipitation requires the lifting of an air mass in the atmosphere so that it cools and some of its moisture condenses. There are three main mechanisms of air lifting. Frontal lifting, or or graphic lifting and convective lifting. Frontal lifting, warm air is lifted over cooler air by frontal passage. Or a graphic lifting is air mass rises to pass over a mountain range. And convective lifting is air drawn, air is drawn upward by convective action. All this was uh, covered in hydrologic class uh, last year detailed, so I'm just gonna remind you of this one as precipitation. In order to precipitate this uh, moisture air, it's just not enough to have uh, the meeting this warm air or air moisture uh, with cooler uh, air frontal. It also needs a process which is called nucleation, which is cons condensation of vapor on tiny solid particles, which is also called aerosols or nuclei. So it also needs these uh, air molecules or water molecules need to uh, meet with uh, these uh, tiny solid particles, which are they, like the aerosol souls maybe a uh, dust particles floating in the air particles contain ions like electrostatic force between them and water molecules or like sulfur and nitrogen compounds this sulfur and nitrogen compounds is uh, from the uh, uh, combustion from the industrial stuff uh, it's going through the air uh, if we look at the size of these particles, these aerosols is between the 10 to uh, 10 to minus 3 power power 10 to minus 3 uh, micrometers, uh, the size of these particles. Uh, and in order to compare this one, we can also see that the size of item is also the, uh, approximately 10 to minus 4 micrometer. So that's why, like I'm giving you, like a, it's gonna be maybe like. 10 times atom size or like a thousand times uh, of atom size of these aerosols. And this is the uh, graphical representation of uh, rainfall or precipitation. Uh, first, the uh, water vapor goes up uh, with evaporation and then droplets form by nucleation. So it's gonna be a, a form of droplet uh, condensing of vapor on tiny solid particles, these aerosols, what I uh, gave you as a, uh, the, just right now, uh, which is like 0 0.001 to 10 micrometer. Then it goes up uh, to droplets increase in size by condensation, okay, and uh, by time it's again uh, going up by. Uh, forming a cloud, the droplets becomes heavy enough to fall, which is, is gonna be like 0.1 millimeter from 0.001 or 10 micrometer to 0.1 millimeter range, which is like an um, around like a um, thousand times of uh, droplets. Okay, so it's getting like bigger and bigger, then it gets heavy, then it starts to fall down. Uh, many droplets decrease in size by evaporation again like when it goes down from the atmosphere because of the like the sun's radiation 
so it increases the the the, like the thermal um, uh, reaction with the uh, radiation and then it decreases the size so it goes again up on the clouds and some droplets increase in size by impact and aggregation so when it meets with this droplets and other droplets it gather together so it aggregate and it starts to fall down but uh, due to the like the wind power and then the drag forces it larger drops maybe the breaks up and then goes again it gets lighter and then goes again up or it falls down with the uh, these uh, droplets which aggregate and then fall down as a raindrop which is 0.1 to 3 millimeter range it's good to also touch the form of precipitation we have uh, several types of precipitation which is rain first then drizzle glaze rime snow hail and sleet uh, interesting uh, interested uh, students can go through and then see the size of all this precipitation range and see like how it forms and what is it uh, you guys can uh, see it why we were talking about uh, precipitation is very important parameter is uh, one one of the important parameter parameter is terminal velocity which is uh, when the rain drop uh, it start to drop like with the terminal velocity the constant velocity so how this phenomena occurs we need to know uh, which condition effect on it and then we need to drive the formula to in order to calculate the uh, terminal velocity three forces act on a falling raindrop the gravity force buoyancy force and drag force so the uh, when we see here as you guys see uh, there is a gravity force is uh, pulling down and uh, drag force is pulling up and the buoyancy force as the moves is downward is gonna be up so uh, we know that uh, the gravity force is gonna be equal to uh, buoyancy force and drain force uh, summation let's go through the formulation and then we are gonna uh, drive this terminal velocity equation gravity force can be represented as the water density gravitational acceleration and pi over 6 d cube which is the volume volume multiplied by the density is gonna be our mass mass multiplied by gravity is gonna be the force okay so it's gonna be the gravity force is representing in this form is open form of this one and buoyancy force is the air is affecting on the these water particles so density of air gravity pi over 6 d cube the and the, uh, the this raindrop uh, diameter is uh, gonna be our buoyancy force and the last one is the drag force the uh, the coefficient of drag multiplied by the air density area of this uh, water particle the velocity of the velocity square of uh, this particle over two give us the drag force if the drop is released from rest it will accelerate until it reaches its terminal velocity at that time the three forces is going to be in the in this balance which is direct force is equal to gravity minus buoyancy okay when we substitute all the equations in the previous uh, equation uh, is gonna give in this form the the uh, coefficient of drag uh, the density of air d square pi over 4 v1 square v terminal square over 2 and is equal to here is the uh, gravity force and uh, minus the buoyancy force and if we take the, the in the left side the terminal velocity is gonna give us uh, 4 gravity the gravitation acceleration over the uh, the raindrop the diameter over three uh, coefficient of drag 
uh, multiply by density of water over density of air minus ones, all of them square root. And here is the table which uh, given the approximate uh, drag coefficient uh, by uh, diameter of drop. So in 0.2 diameter millimeter uh, of drop diameter, the drag coefficient is 4.2, 0.4, 1.66, and 0 0.6, 1.07 and it goes on in this table all the uh, drag coefficient at atmospheric pressure and 20 centigrade degree of air temperature. Here is an example of a thermal velocity of a 1 mm diameter raindrop falling in still air at standard atmospheric pressure which is 101.3 kPa and temperature 20 centigrade degree. We need here for this question the uh, uh, drag coefficient uh, for one millimeter which is uh, in this table it is given 0 0.671 and we need and um, at this condition which is atmospheric pressure and 20 centigrade degree the density of water and density of air let's go through and then uh, solve this question in this question, we are going to find uh, one millimeter diameter of raindrops falling uh, to, in order to determine the uh, terminal velocity. We know that the uh, terminal velocity formulation is uh, equal to 4 uh, gravitational acceleration diameter of raindrop over 3 coefficient of drag or multiply by uh, density of water and over the density of air minus 1, all of them square root. Uh, we have to know at temperature 20 degree and at uh, 101.3 kilopascal air, uh, at this condition, what is the uh, density of water and what is the density of air? Uh, it's given or you need to check the table uh, that it's gonna be 998 kilogram over meter cube and density of air is around 1.2 on 1 kilogram per meter cube at these conditions. Then we just need to calculate the terminal velocity. So 4 multiplied by 9.81 which is gravitational acceleration. This is one millimeter, so it's gonna be 10 minus 3, 10 power minus 3 meter over 3. And coefficient of determination we need to find from the our uh, table, uh, which gives us 0 0.671. Uh, 0 0.671. Then we need to multiply uh, Density of water is 998 over 1.2 density of air minus 1. So all of them square root. Sorry. All of them square root. Uh, this answer, now when we uh, substitute all the uh, variables and then if we calculate it, it's going to give us 4.0 two meter per second of terminal velocity uh, when the one millimeter uh, raindrop uh, falling at 20 centigrade degree and 101.3 kilopascal we have the 4.02 meter per second terminal velocity okay next sub chapter is rainfall uh, we uh, need to calculate or determine the rainfall, how much rainfall, amount of rainfall in one uh, catchment. So uh, in order to do this one, uh, we are taking the area rainfall. Uh, we have a couple of methods, which is uh, several of methods, which is like arithmetic mean method, TSM method, Eisenheitel method, and so on. Uh, the arithmetic mean method is the simplest method of determining area of average rainfall. It is averaging the rainfall depths recorded at a number of gates 
Uh, this method is satisfactory if the gates are uniformly distributed over the area. So the uh, if you take the area, it's gonna be uh, like all of them is taking the same portion of area. And individual gates measurements do not vary greatly. So like if one of them uh, is let's say uh, five millimeter, the other one is fifteen millimeter is not valid. This uh, method. So we need to apply the other methods, okay? So like it's if it is one, five millimeter, the other one is six or like um, four or seven is fine. Let's see graphical representation of the arithmetic mean method. Uh, we have here uh, station like gates uh, two, three, four, and five. Uh, this is the stations. Uh, in these stations there is like a rain gates which is measurement and then we see that the out of the catchment area there is P2 prime uh, in this method we are not taking into account this P2 prime we just need to concentrate inside the catchment area okay uh, so the area is taken over these guys is not uh, important so we are gonna take only the uh, how much a rainfall uh, in this area uh, in millimeter or inch so let's see the example uh, in station 2 is 20 millimeters recorded P, uh, P3 which is third uh, station is gonna be 30 uh, fourth station 40 and uh, fifth station 50 millimeter of rainfall observed we are going to add each other, so we found uh, the total of 140 millimeters uh, depth of height of rainfall occurred in these stations. Uh, we are going to take the average, which we are going to take divided four, we, because we have four stations. So 35 millimeters of each stations, let's say, and then we are saying in this area, uh, 35 millimeters of rain occurred in the uh, certain period. The next method is TISM method. Uh, the description of TISM method is at an, any point in the watershed or catchment area, the rainfall is the same as that at the nearest gauge, so the depth recorded at a given gauge is applied out to a distance halfway to the next station in any direction. So let's say we have two different uh, stations. We are gonna draw a line, and then in between, uh, we like we are we are considering the uh, each station has own territory. Uh, I'm gonna show it in the graphical way in the next slide. Uh, so let's go on. Um, the next description is the relative weights for each gauge are determined from the corresponding areas of application in a TISM polygon network uh, the boundaries of the polygons being formed by the perpendicular bisectors of the lines joining adjacent gates and when we do this one let's say we uh, formed our polygons and then we know all the gates inside these areas so we need to divide the total area of uh, uh, of uh, the uh, multiplication of the each areas with the uh, corresponding precipitation. So uh, the formulation mathematical representation is shown here. P prime uh, P bar is equal to one over a the total uh, from one to j the ma uh, maximum number of uh, gates a j p j uh, where the watershed area a is the the total uh, the total of the, the summation of the all the uh, areas. Last year, you guys saw how to form a TISM poly polygons. Uh, if you want to uh, remember this one, uh, you just uh, need to go back to see it. And also, there is a computer program in order to draw these uh, polygons. Uh, let's say we already formed all these uh, polygons and uh, we divided all the areas into uh, corresponding um, 
station and if we say let's uh, the first station uh, is even though is outside of uh, watershed is gonna take some portion of it which is a one very very small area but is still uh, applying this p1 so p1 is uh, like 10 millimeter is observed we need to multiply by a1 which is 0 0.22 it's a very small portion of this total watershed then p2 is 20 millimeter 30 40 50 millimeters all these stations is going to multiply by the corresponding area and then we are going to find the weighted rainfall uh, in the, the last column we are going to add each other we are going to find the total area is 9.15 14 kilometers squares let's see and the weighted rainfall is 28 284.6 millimeters so when we divide uh, 284.6 over 9.15 is going to be 31.1 millimeter of rain is occurred in this uh, watershed. Another method is isohytal method. Uh, in this method, use observed depth at rain gates, interpolate between adjacent gates. It's flexible and knowledge of the storm patterns uh, can influence the drawing of the iso heights, uh, but a fairly dense network of gates is needed. So the, uh, there is advantage and then but disadvantage of a fairly dense network of gates is needed. The graphical representation of iso heights method is uh, as shown. Uh, is showing the depth of the corresponding uh, lines uh, is like a contour map um, we see here 10 20 30 40 50 millimeter of depth in this uh, following iso heights uh, as you see 10 we see there is a two portion of uh, area on the right side and the left side so we are gonna take uh, let's say we have the 10 uh, millimeter of the uh, rainfall occur in p1 stations isolates and uh, we draw a line to uh, is 10 million 10 millimeter rain uh, occurs in the watershed if we are going to take right side is the 0 0.88 millimeter kilometer square and the left side is 159 then we are going to divide it in this 10 is 5 to 15 right we are just gonna uh, just saying like a representative you, you can make it this five as like eight or something like that as well but we are just gonna round it up uh, so we just need to multiply with the, this uh, 0.88 area with the average rainfall and we are gonna find rainfall volume then we are gonna add all these variables uh, then we find 255.2 uh, rain volume rainfall volume total of rainfall, uh, rainfall volume in this catchment area and 9.14 is uh, we know that is the watershed area or catchment area so when we divide we found 27.9 millimeters or inch of uh, rainfall uh, occurred in this watershed area of course there are not there are uh, many other uh, methods in order to find determine the uh, rainfall or precipitation which are reciprocal, reciprocal distance squared method and distance weighting or map x so this is out of our scope i just show you guys the, the common approach of uh, how can you uh, calculate this precipitation which you already see in your hydrology class uh, this is just a reminder of how uh, we determine and uh, uh, just you like uh, when you guys see you guys are remanding and we can go further after we finish the precipitation part and then rainfall part now we need to cover the evaporation evaporation is a process in which a liquid changes to vapor state at the free surface 
below the boiling point through the transport of heat energy. So it's phase change and with the um, heat occur in this process. So in civil engineering or hydrology class, we know that uh, uh, this liquid is water and this heat energy or heat source is sun radiation. And methods of estimating evaporation is uh, fairly hard, uh, but we are going to cover uh, some analytical method. Uh, but mostly it is experimental and empirical formulation uh, have in this uh, area, study area. But in analytical, we have two models, which are energy balance and aerodynamic method. Uh, we are going to cover this analytical method because we have um, um, like a mathematical equation which is uh, given you like maybe like 10 to 15 percent error uh, margin uh, approximately uh, but it's uh, good enough to know the analytical method uh, rather than empirical because, experimental because uh, we know that uh, evaporation or precipitation or rainfall or whatever like uh, like transpiration this is uh, all depends on time and space right so that's why uh, it's better to have the analytical method the first is energy balance uh, in the right side we see the graphical representation of a water pan uh, which is uh, filled with water till the depth of hash and it's open air so the net radiation goes inside to heat the water inside the pan and uh, it evaporates the, the liquid water uh, so we as we see here we have uh, heat conducted to ground so there is an uh, heat goes the ground uh, decrease the energy of this radiation Rn and also the sensible heat to air so it gives also the energy to the air as well so we have a control surface we have uh, density of air and we have density of water and uh, area the, cor uh, the corresponding area is uh, we are showing as a in order to do, do this energy balance theorem first of all we need to uh, make the continuity equation we have two phases multiple phases which is uh, water and air so first let's do the liquid phase which is water as we know that if we uh, want to derive the continuity equation, we take the uh, extensive and intensive properties. Extensive properties is the mass and intensive properties is dm over dm, which is 1 we are taking. And uh, at the end, we have minus m uh, m v dot why it is minus because we are losing water that's why it's gonna be minus and is equal to d over dt triple integral the control volume of rho v dv plus the surface integral of rho v b dA uh, because we are taking the uh, water there is no income or outcome so the uh, velocity of this uh, water is zero right so the surface integral is goes to zero because v is zero and uh, we only have the control surface of rho v dv and d over dt so uh, we know that the volume integral with the rho v rho v is constant uh, uh, is incompressible fluid so rho v can be outside and area is not changing only the height is changing so only we can take the uh, dh over dt which is dh here the delta h which is change of uh, height over dt is equal to uh, the, the change of mass of water 
uh, minus change of water. And this is equal to mv that is equal to uh, density of water area and e which is this e is dh over minus dh over dt and it is evaporation is called evaporation rate after we complete the liquid phase let's go to vapor phase uh, so because it is multi-phase flow right so the water vapor for water vapor uh, we wrote again our uh, Continuity equation as follows m dot m dot v is equal to d over dt and control volume integral specific humidity rho a dv plus control surface specific humidity rho a v da. Why it's not one and is specific humidity? Because the we said the uh, second lecture of this class. Uh, the mass of air has different compounds rather than only uh, water vapor. That's why we are taking the specific humidity. If you don't remem rem uh, remember, just go back to the second lecture and then you will see how we derive this equation. Uh, for steady airflow and uh, substituting liquid mass uh, instead of the mass of uh, mv dot, uh, we can say the density of water A and evaporation rate is equal to uh, the control surface of QV rho A V D A. Uh, the control volume is gone because it's steady state. So let's take it, let's say it's too much uh, time, it's a long time period, and then we are taking just a steady state and it's uh, zero. Uh, and therefore, the evaporation rate can be calculated here as uh, we are taking the evaporation rate and then we divided rho V A both sides. So it's going to be easy, E is equal to 1 over uh, density of water area, uh, close parenthesis. And then we are going to take the surface integral of Q V rho A V T A. When we completed the continuity equation for both liquid and gas states uh, let's go to right now energy equation uh, we know that the energy equation the open form of uh, energy equation as uh, it follows for the hydrological system for water dh over dt minus dw over dt is equal to d over dt triple integral the internal energy o plus the kinetic energy plus potential energy density multiplied by the uh, infinitesimal volume element plus the surface integral again the internal energy plus uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy density multiplied by velocity multiplied that product of R, the infinitesimal area unit area so uh, there is no work done for this system so it's not motion, there is no motion, there is no changing anything, right? It's not uh, making any work outside the surface or it's not taking work to make this one. And the velocity of water is zero, we know that. And elevation is negligible, which is Z is going to be zero. There is no change in Z. Uh, the A hash in this volume is very negligible to change. So we take Z is gone, V, the kinetic energy is gone. Uh, only thing we have here is dH over dt because on the control surface uh, parameter there is velocity, so it's gone. So dH over dt is equal to d over dt volume integral of the internal energy multiplied by density of water and uh, infinitesimal volume element. As we previously depicted, uh, the dH over dt, which is the energy, the, the change of energy, is the net radiation goes inside this water pan minus the sensible heat to air and minus heat conducted to the ground. So it, it is in this balance of energy. So only thing is change is internal energy of the water therefore it can be written 
the Rn, which is uh, net radiation, minus H Hs, which is sensible heat to air, minus G, which is also the heat conducted to ground, right, is equal to Lv mv dot. Lv here is the latent heat, which is, as I said previously, uh, if we change from the water, water from the, the gas states, liquid to gas states, during this time, we need to give latent energy in order to change the phases. Okay, uh, when we substitute this Lv mv and this, RA, uh, this balance equation, uh, for 1 meter square unit area, we are going to find E is equal to 1 over LV rho W Rn, uh, we need to multiply by Rn minus Hs minus G. Okay, so uh, this uh, is going to be our uh, final equation. And if sensible heat flux and heat conducted to ground is zero all the incoming radiation is absolute absorbed by evaporation and calculated as er is equal to rn over lv rho v so which means if we insulated the bottom so there is no heat conducted to the ground and let's say the air uh, also like we uh, we um, avoid uh, lose the heat to the air uh, so we keep all the heat inside and we can ignore the hashes or it goes to zero uh, so the all radiation uh, absorbed by the water in order to evaporate this water element it's better to solve an example here in order to understand everything this energy balance theorem we are going to calculate by the energy balance method the evaporation rate from an open water surface if the net radiation is 200 watt per meter square and the air temperature is 25 centigrade degree. We are going to assume no sensible heat or ground heat flux. So that means there is no H, H, S and G. We are going to take these parameters zero okay in this question uh, it's uh, it's clear that there is no uh, ground uh, flux and there is no uh, sensible heat of flux into the air so we just have uh, er is equal to rn which is the radiation energy over the latent heat and the density of water. So the Rn is given 200, uh, right? It's gonna give us 200 watt over meter square. Uh, we need to know the density of water at 25 centigrade degree, which is, let's see, uh, rho W is uh, at 25 centigrade degree is, um, uh, let me check, is 997, 997 kilogram over meter cube, okay, and the, the latent heat uh, for 25 centigrade degree, we need to have uh, from our second chapter, uh, I already provide that, is we have this formula, 2.501 2 multiplied by 10 to power 6 minus 2370 multiplied by temperature. Our temperature here uh, is centigrade degree, so we need to multiply by 25 here. So it's going to be 2.501 multiplied by 10 to 6 minus 2370 multiplied by 25. Um, so the latent energy is given here um, uh, 2441 kilojoule over kilogram 
Uh, if we take this one, it's gonna be joule over kilogram. So I divided everywhere 1000. So in order to have kilojoule over kilogram, let me show like this so it can be better seen. Okay. All right. Uh, so it's just uh, we just need to uh, plug all the uh, variables. Rn is 200. Uh, what? Um, so it's kilo, 2441 is kilojoule. So we need to convert it to the joule because this is what? So 10 to power 3 and multiply by density is 997 kilogram over meter cube. So uh, our um, Energy uh, when we multiply all this one uh, we are gonna have eight point let's see here eight point twenty two multiply ten to minus eight meter per second so um, our uh, Calculate the evaporation rate. Okay, our evaporation rate is 8.22 multiply 10 to minus 8 meter per second. Every second there is 8.22 multiply 10 to 8 meter of water is evaporated uh, in um, a certain area like unit area, okay? One meter square or something like that. If we take this one to the uh, as what we are measuring as rain millimeter and millimeter per day, so it's gonna be uh, if you convert all the uh, necessary units, it's gonna be 7.1 millimeter per day. Every day, 7.1 millimeter of water height is evaporated in this catchment area. The next one is aerodynamic method uh, in for this evaporation, determining the evaporation rate uh, in analytical uh, method. Besides the supply of heat energy, the second factor controlling the evaporation rate from an open water surface is the ability to transport water vapor away from the surface. The transport rate is governed by the humidity gradient in the air near the surface and the wind speed. These two processes can be analyzed by coupling the equations for mass and momentum transport in air. It's a little bit complicated uh, and as civil engineers uh, maybe we need to go back very very far from um, like two years before for uh, fluid mechanics in order to see the boundary layer theorem and blah blah. So uh, in order to go through the details of this method, I'm just gonna give the important equations so we can jump to the conclusion. Interested reader uh, can go through and um, study the details of aerodynamics method but at the end, we are going to find this Tong-White Boltzmann equation, which is the, the rate of change of mass is equal to a bunch of these variables. And we recall the equivalent evaporation rate as the rate of change of mass, as we do before, the rate of change, which is m dot v, is equal to like um, the water mass, the density of mass and the evaporation rate and multiply by area. So uh, we say uh, the final equation is the evaporation rate is equal to B uh, in multiplied by the saturated water vapor minus uh, water vapor. Uh, where is B is depends on the, the von Karman constant, which is K is generally taken 0 0.4 square, 0 0.4, K is 0 0.4. And the density of air, the velocity, and the pressure, density of water, and then the elevation. So when we use these uh, parameters, we are finding the evaporation rate with 
aerodynamic method. Let's see an example. It's gonna be understanding that. Okay, uh, we are gonna calculate the evaporation rate with using aerodynamic method. Again, is the air temperature is 25 centigrade degree. Uh, the relative humidity is given here uh, for 40%. Uh, air pressure is 101.3 kilopascal and wind speed is 3 meters per second. All measured at height 2 meters above the water surface. So we are assuming the roughness of height uh, Z0 as 0.03 centimeters. Uh, let's see the calculation, how we are going to calculate the evaporation rate with using uh, aerodynamic method. Okay, now we are going to find uh, evaporation rate uh, by using aerodynamic method. Uh, in order to find this one, uh, we know that evaporation rate with using aerodynamic method is B, uh, which is a vapor transfer coefficient, uh, EAS minus EA. Right, so water vapor saturated with water vapor minus uh, water vapor. Uh, let's go through first uh, to define B, uh, which is a vapor transfer coefficient. Uh, we know that B is, is equal to 0 0.622 von Karman constant square uh, multiplied by the wind velocity over. Uh, pressure of air water density at a certain temperature whatever is given and natural logarithm of uh, Z2 which is the elevation measurement taken and Z0 which is uh, the surface height the roughness so we can take 0 if it's not given and if it's given the roughness we are gonna take whatever it is if we take zero, we know that uh, we, if we divide, it's going to be the infinity. So the, our question is gone. So there's why we are taking a um, roughness. We are not taking zero. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's B is equal to 0 0.622 uh, multiplied by 0 0.4, which is one Karman's constant square. Uh, we know that wind is 3 meter per second over... Pressure is uh, given 101.3, 101.3 multiplied by 10 to 3, it was kilopascal, so I turn uh, convert it to pascal. Uh, at, we know that uh, the density of water at 25 degree per, in the previous example is 997 kilogram uh, meter cube. Right, kilogram per meter cube, and uh, natural logarithm of uh, Z2 is 2 meter over uh, Z0, which is the roughness, is 0 0.03 centimeter. Uh, so, 0 0.03, let's say in the parenthesis, 0 0.03 times 10 to minus 3 is gonna give us meter. Okay. Uh, Let's do this one. Okay. Uh, when we plug all the uh, variables and then when we calculate it, it's going to give us 4.54 times 10 to minus 11 meter per pascal second is our um, vapor transfer coefficient, which is B. Okay. Then what we need to calculate, let me draw here, uh, we are going to calculate the evaporation rate, which is B, what we calculated, and EAS minus EA, saturated water vapor minus water vapor, at 25 centigrade degree and uh, 101.3 uh, kilopascal. Uh, we need to look at the, the table uh, and uh, in this table is gonna given so uh, at the book 454 
times 10 to minus 11 which is B and then E saturated water vapor is given uh, 25 centigrade degree 3167 Pascal 3167 Pascal minus so we are gonna find the uh, um, water vapor which is the relative humidity multiplied by relative humidity multiplied by uh, saturated water vapor uh, relative humidity is 40% we know uh, so we are gonna instead of relative humidity we are gonna move right so let me, let me do this one right so uh, it's gonna be 3167 minus relative humidity multiplied by the uh, uh, saturated water vapor so we know that uh, relative humidity the, in the question is 40 percent so it's 0 0.4 and EAS which is saturated water vapor which already we are writing 3167 3167 so is 0.6 uh, the so our equation is gonna be uh, 4.54 times 10 to uh, minus 11 uh, this is 1 this is 0 0.4 is gonna be 0 0.6 0 0.6 multiply 3167 of E uh, saturated water vapor so EA uh, which is uh, aerodynamic uh, method evaporation rate is found 8.62 times 10 to minus 8 meter per second and uh, we are calculating again for millimeter per day is gonna be 7.45 millimeter per day so it means every day 7.45 millimeter uh, water is um, losing or like a liquid water is losing as a uh, vapor in this condition if you pay attention uh, in energy balance method uh, we see that if there is like heat uh, radiation uh, from sun uh, some radiation occurs we can calculate we can apply the uh, energy balance and aerodynamic method if we uh, consider the wind uh, energy and wind uh, speed and uh, this uh, the elevation and all the constant if we know uh, we can use this aerodynamic uh, method let's say if these two are limited uh, it's very hard to find the uh, sun's radiation at the current space and time space and time and then the, also the wind surface the wind uh, velocity speed uh, we need to take it into account blah blah so let's say it's limited uh, normally both of them uh, are limited right so therefore they uh, develop or improve um, a combined method so uh, combined method is very common to use in order to find the evaporation rate in this uh, combined method the evaporation rate is estimated E is equal to delta over delta plus gamma plus the radiation of like of energy balance which we take the evaporation rate in energy balance then plus gamma over delta plus gamma which is aerospace model evaporation rate is added so when we use this uh, two equation two sub, uh, parameters we are gonna obtain the uh, combined method evaporation rate here gamma is the psychometric constant and delta is the gradient of the saturated vapor pressure curve at air temperature ta for very large areas 
the Presley-Taylor evaporation equation is used. It's just like energy balance equation with the uh, with a, with a one ratio, which is uh, alpha, which is taken generally 1.3, 1.3 multiplied by uh, gradient of saturation vapor pressure uh, curve at air temperature T over again delta plus gamma, which is psychometric constant. Uh, we need to multiply this one with the ER, which is uh, as we calculate the uh, energy balance uh, like, or radiation, only the radiation evaporation. Right. Okay, uh, we are going to use the previous example for the uh, energy balance method example and aerodynamic method example is going to be the same thing as you see the radiation is 200 watt meter per meter square the temperature 25 centigrade degree relative humidity to 40 wind speed 3 meter per second or recorded height is 2 meter and atmospheric pressure 101.3 kilopascal is the same thing the we are we just gonna go through and then we are gonna find the er and e a uh, for energy balance equipment method evaporation rate and everything method evaporation rate but we need to define first uh, gamma and delta gamma is uh, cp kh p over 0.622 the latent heat and kw we are gonna find this ratio kh over kw and uh, for delta we are gonna find uh, we are gonna use 4900 e8 es the saturated operation vapor uh, pressure uh, 237.3 plus temperature square. Uh, let's go through the example and then uh, I will define this gamma and uh, delta and we can solve uh, our uh, new evaporation rate uh, by using combination method. Okay, uh, let's first of all start with our psychometric uh, constant gamma is equal to uh, CP KH P over uh, 0 0.622 latent heat LV KW so um, let's define all of this one CP is uh, for air we are using 1000 Five for constant pressure the uh, specific it let's say joule kilogram Kelvin joule kilogram Kelvin okay uh, kh over kw which is this uh, heat diffusivity is taken one generally so uh, this ratio is taken one and uh, the other one is um, the latent heat at 25 centigrade degree we already calculated previous example so it was 2441 times 10 to 3 joule over kilogram right okay uh, so let's define all of them gamma is equal to uh, cp is 1005 1005 uh, kh over kw i'm just writing here one uh, so i just uh, take the ratio uh, we know that the the pressure is 101.3 times 10 to 3 pascal over uh, let me do it like here okay over 0 0.622 and uh, we are going to write the latent heat which is 2441 times 10 to 3 joule over kilogram uh, at the end, we are going to find um, here is 67.1, 67.1 Pascal over centigrade degree. So this is uh, for gamma. Let's go through the uh, define delta. For delta, uh, the disgraded uh, of the saturated water pressure 
uh, curve at 25 centigrade degree. Uh, it's defined 4098 ES, which is uh, EAS, same thing, uh, which we already defined uh, over, uh, which is saturated uh, vapor pressure. Uh, 230, 237.3 plus temperature square. Okay. Uh, 4098 and ES, we previously example, we already uh, defined it is 3167 Pascal. 3167 Pascal over 237.3 plus uh, Temperature is 25 centigrade degree square. And uh, if we calculate it, this guy is 188.7 Pascal over centigrade degree. Okay, let's combine all this one and then let's go uh, to our final equation. Let's see. Uh, so what was it? E is equal to... Uh, let me see delta delta over delta plus gamma the from uh, energy balance evaporation rate plus gamma over delta plus gamma from evaporation uh, aerodynamic rate evaporation rate okay so um, E is equal to so gamma is 188.7 over uh, 188.7 plus 67.1. Okay. Multiply by ER. Uh, what is ER? Uh, ER we found. Uh, let me have here EA I found uh, here ER okay uh, here ER um, I found 7.1 uh, millimeter per day right so 7.1 millimeter per day plus uh, I am gonna do uh, um, gamma is 67.1 over 188.7 plus 67.1 right, let's see here uh, then we are gonna uh, the multiply by aerodynamic uh, which is aerodynamic here 7.45 millimeter per day 7.45 uh, we just need to multiply and this is the ratio and the the final answer is 7.2 millimeter per day. So as you see, it is uh, bigger than energy balance evaporation rate, uh, lower than aerodynamic uh, evaporation rate. It is in the combined uh, evaporation rate. Okay, your homework is... Uh, Find the same evaporation rate, same example, uh, for same condition, evaporation rate, for large areas. Uh, when you guys uh, uh, find uh, this evaporation rate for large areas, you guys need to use the Presley-Taylor equation. And when you find your solution, just discuss why it is different than the normal uh, all these uh, combined aerospace and aerodynamic and uh, energy balance methods okay uh, have a nice day and uh, thank you for attending